What? He's saying there's a correlation between being left-wing and being low in agreeableness and low in conscientiousness. That can't possibly be right. I, I'm left-wing, which is the only possible thing that any moral and good person can be. And I'm brilliant. I'm perfect. I'm wonderful. I'm just a really, really nice person. And anyone who disagrees with me is a shitty person. That can't be right. <laughs> I'll show him. Source. Yeah, yeah, that'll show. I bet, I bet he, I bet he can't find a source, and I bet even if it is a source, it's not a very good source. I bet it's the Daily Mail. Sorry, Daily Fail or something. And anyway, correlation doesn't equal causation. That's like basic statistics. Anyone that knows that, particularly if you do a, a degree in feminist studies like I've done, anyone knows correlation doesn't equal causation. Yeah, <laughs> that'll show him. That'll, that'll, that'll show him the Nazi in all caps. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of The Jolly Heretic. Now, today I would like to look at uh, what I call, well, the most common midwit arguments, the most common arguments of the academic poser who has an IQ of about 115 but thinks that they're much more intelligent uh, that, uh, that I receive on this channel. I think they're really worth looking into and really worth understanding, the most common midwit arguments and what they mean. Now, the first of these is simply the argument uh, put in put in uh, under the video or whatever of source question mark demanding a source. Well, what is this argument? Uh, all you have to do, if you want to know the source of what I have said, is Google the keywords I have used, and you will almost certainly, within seconds, find the source. Uh, you sh often I will name the paper. Uh, that I am talking about. And even if I haven't, the key words that will lead you to the paper very quickly, uh, or you could simply find one of my books and track down the paper. So the fact that you have said source is a cope. It is, it is, it is, it is as if you're saying, okay, I don't like what, I don't like what this individual is saying. I don't like what he's arguing. So I'll demand a source uh, and he won't respond to me, obviously. He won't bother responding to me. And therefore, I can reassure myself. I can say to myself, well, the fact that he hasn't given me a source proves that he's wrong. The fact that he hasn't given me a source proves that he doesn't have a source. And therefore, the cognitive dissonance that I've experienced, the experience of feeling that um, what is being asserted about the world is not what I desire to be true about the world, is not what um, is not um, a model of the world which makes me feel good and makes me feel morally superior, makes me feel important, that model of the world hasn't been challenged because he hasn't been able to come up with a source and therefore I've insulated myself, I've asked for a source, he hasn't given me a source and therefore he's wrong and therefore I can feel better about myself. That's why, that's that's the nature of asking for a source, that it's a way of insulating oneself psychologically against findings which one doesn't like or it's simply an expression of just being really, really lazy. OK, so that, that's source. The second thing, then, is all caps. Now, um, the use of all caps in an argument um, is just... Obviously, it's a, it's a kind of... Uh, uh expressive fallacy should we say what you want to, uh, one of the fallacies in one of the informal fallacies in philosophy is appeal to emotion so if you if you if you use emotion in your argument uh, then then you're you're basically attempting to shut the other person down you're you're attempting to intimidate your interlocutor into silence you're attempting to um, or, or manipulate them into silence via your expression of emotion you made me cry you made me cry stop talking you're being mean you've made me cry well that's what caps is doing it, it's emphasizing the emotion of the interlocutor uh, as as a as a means of trying to intimidate people into not counter-arguing. Now, of course, it's something that you would do in real life via shouting, via raising your voice or whatever, and it's something that you do online via, cap, via, via, via caps. You'll say, there is definitely not, a, a capital N, capital O, capital T, a relationship between um, intelligence and, uh, I, I don't know, political orientation. That is just, that is clearly nonsense. You have no idea what you're talking about. It makes the person feel better to express the emotion. It gets out of their system uh, how they how they feel, and there is an unconscious sort of idea that you are intimidating the other person, that you are you are spreading a bit of anger, you are making them feel that oh maybe they should back down, and you are hoping that 
that they'll just go away and shut up and stop saying things which challenge you and stop saying things which cause cognitive dissonance, thus permitting a bit of cognitive consonance to occur. That's Cap's Law. The next is with regard to talking about averages. So if you make an assertion such as, on average, people that are left-wing are less agreeable and less conscientious than people that are right-wing, then the a counter-argument to that is to say, oh, well, I know some people that are left-wing that are very, very kind and very, very nice. Now, why would you make that counter-argument? Well, there are two reasons why you would make that counter-argument. The first is simply, it's not even a midwit argument, it's just that you have low IQ, that a, a person does not understand the nature of averages. A person does not understand abstract thought. And so they engage, they engage in what you call in philosophy an appeal to anecdote. I happen to know someone that is like this. And they feel that that's a counter-argument because they're just too, too stupid to understand um, abstract thought. Uh, the second, the, what we might call the more wit midwit argument, is that in most circumstances, these kinds of people would indeed understand abstract thought and understand averages. But when you are highly emotionally invested in something, when it's a big, when it's a big part of your identity and your sense of self, and therefore of, of, of something which makes you feel important and worthwhile in the world, then your thought, your logical processes can be clouded. And um, for emotional reasons, fallacious arguments, which you otherwise wouldn't use in other circumstances, can become attractive. Um, your reason, as it were, can be overwhelmed by your emotion. So in those circumstances, a person who is left wing and it's a big part of their identity and they don't like the idea that left wing people are less kind than right wing people will be attracted to ideas such, such as, well, that can't be right. It can't be right. I've met people um, who are loads of all the people I know that are left wing are really nice. All the people I know that are right wing are really nasty, uh, and 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 therefore it's it's nonsense. And that that on, in any other circumstance, that person would know that that was a fallacy and that was an appeal to anic to anecdote. Uh, uh, but but in these circumstances, they're so overwhelmed by emotion that they're able to convince themselves, no, my my anecdote is is so is so overwhelming. The ev my personal evidence is so massive that it overwhelms um, these these studies. And they might also then sort of start finding copes with regard to the nature of the state. Ah, oh, well, what's the sample size? What's the level of statistical significance? Uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, some, some other way of, of trying to, 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 um, to, to permit themselves to maintain a positive self-image in the face of something they don't like. Which brings me on to the next midwit argument, which is to say, correlation doesn't equal causation, which is, oh, it's just the most stupid, banal statement. Correlation doesn't equal causation. Um, that, that a person who has no understanding of statistics or anything like that, the one thing they have learnt, the one thing they do know, is the correlation doesn't equal causation. Um, now, in most circumstances, if they were presented with a, a correlational relationship that on a reasonable sample that was statistically significant, they would never dream of saying correlation doesn't equal causation. It would be a proof for them of their viewpoint. Um, and uh, But, but in, the, in a set of circumstances in which they don't like what they're finding, then they will assert that correlation doesn't need causation. Um, but of course, no, it doesn't. Obviously, it doesn't. Correlation does not equal causation. No, no. But it is mu it is likely to if you can come up with a plausible theory that would explain why the relationship exists. Um, and you can, of course, go further than that and you can compare different theories and you could engage in statistical modelling to see which is the most probable theory. But certainly, if you find a correlation between two variables and you find a reasonable parsimonious theory as to why it would exist, then although causation and equal causation, it is likely to equal causation in that set of circumstances. So the fact then that you just continue saying correlation doesn't equal causation simply implies that you don't like what you're finding, what you're hearing. So again, it's an example of cognitive dissonance. It's an example of seeing something which which does not fit with the, about the nature of the world, which does not fit with how you want the world to be. And so you simply assert correlation doesn't equal causation, and therefore that is a, that, and that's it. And and in, and ignore uh, uh, any comebacks from your interlocutor and therefore you can reassure yourself that actually no it's just some statistical blip there's just some problem with the data there's just something and that's why this relationship exists which you don't like uh, and therefore you can move on and you can carry on with having your your high sense of self-esteem um, the next uh, that, they, that they will engage in is just appeal to insult now again this is something which um 
I noticed with the Andrew Tate video, which I put up recently, I, I'm, I, normally a, a person with a reasonable intelligence would understand that appeal to insult, it's just like using caps lock or whatever. It's a way of shutting down your interlocutor. It's a way of engaging in emotion or whatever. It's not a logical argument. But if you are completely overwhelmed by your feelings, then then it, it, it just it just happens and you don't really realize it and you and you use it and you and you really do genuinely think that, that, that this is that, that it's a reasonable thing to do I find this a lot with um, Adam Rutherford and debating with him on Twitter that you just get a series of fallacies so you, it's it, you, you will have appeal to insult you know I mean you'll say something like oh look at you sitting in your in your in your mum's cellar that's what I get a lot I mean it's not my mum's cellar but my mum's house doesn't have a cellar but um it, it, you know, you're sitting there in your mum's cellar with oh look at look at you with your, your, your crap uh, wardrobe. What are you, poor or something? Why are, Is that why you don't like Andrew Tate? Is that why you're having to go at Andrew Tate? These kinds of arguments, appeal to insult, ap appeal ad hominem. Um, and this is, of course, the what the midwit has to do, has to do because he can't come up with a logical counter argument. He can't come up with a logical argument which 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 allows him to maintain uh, th this uh, this sense of positive identity. And so, therefore, he has to engage in appeal to insult. And there are many informal fallacies like this. And I mean, another one obviously is appeal to authority, so to say, oh, well, look, so and so says this, and so and so has a doctorate in in the related subject. I mean, so what? Uh, the fact that someone has a doctorate in theology and uh, Richard Dawkins, who has a doctorate in biology, criticises him. Is, that, that's a meaningless argument. Oh, well, the, Richard Dawkins doesn't know anything about theology. He doesn't have a doctorate in theology. What utter, what utter tosh. An argument's either logical or it's not logical. It doesn't matter who makes the argument. It doesn't matter what qualifications they've got. The argument, based on reading the available uh, evidence and whatever, is either logical or it's not logical. It's an objective fact. An argument is either reasonable or it is not reasonable. It's completely irrelevant who makes it. Now you might argue that a person with a certain level of education in a field or whatever might be more likely to understand all of the variables involved. Well yeah that is that is true but that but you don't you can you can either get those very understand those variables by looking into it and researching it in, in a lot of detail um, um, independently which as of course people get older they are much more likely to, to move outside of the field in which they have been narrowly trained when they're young and look at all kinds of things and indeed most of the innovations that are made in most subjects are made and there's a there's a, again google the study i mean you're going to say source i'll give you a clue dean k simmonton uh, most of the most of the start most of the innovations that are made in most subjects are made by people that have trained in another subject um, and that's because that's because they um are able to look at the other this new subject from an outsider perspective. They don't have a kind of home blindness, as it were, um, um, and they, they see connections which those that are trained in the subject don't make. So most of the great innovations that are made in any given subject are made usually by people that are trained in another subject the great serious major innovations so it's it's just no argument whatsoever and it's a way of coping with uh, with 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 the uh, things which you which you've heard which you don't like so this is this is appeal to authority appeal appeal to insult uh, anything like this um i once heard adam rutherford accuse me because i talked about fallacies and engaging in the fallacy fallacy he said your use of talking about me having fa using fallacies is the, is the fallacy fallacy but that's just the fallacy almost of, of, well, that's not even a fallacy. That's just being wrong because the fallacy fallacy is not, is not that you use, use the fallacy argument incorrect uh, a, a lot, the fallacy fallacy. The fallacy fallacy is that you assume that because the arguments that are used to um, substantiate an assertion are fallacious, therefore the assertion is wrong. That's the fallacy fallacy. So if I say to you, um, yeah, um, uh, I, I don't know, the, the, wor the, world, the world is definitely round scientists say so right that's a fallacy that's that, that that that's 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 a fallacy now if i then say well no the round the, 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 the you, that's your argument scientists say the world is round and therefore the world is round. no it can't be it must be flat that's the fallacy fallacy because the fact that the argument that has been used is fallacious does not mean that the assertion is necessarily wrong but anyway all of these different fallacies that's what you get and finally i just I, i'll just add, add a final one well, it's very similar it's very similar to the uh demanding a source really link question mark link now of course what you're saying uh, question mark often uh, exclamation mark as well now what you're saying with, with, with that is i don't agree it's this emotional way of expressing things often in capital letters i don't agree with what you're saying 
I'm not going to agree with what you're saying. I'm prejudiced against what you're saying. And I don't expect you to give me a link. And therefore, you, you won't. And therefore, I have by, by doing that and by you not responding, I have, uh, I have uh, insulated myself against this information which I don't like to hear. And, and therefore, I feel better. And therefore, I have cognitive constants rather than cognitive dissonance. So those are the key midwit arguments. And since I started doing a quick pint, uh, which has involved a, a much more in interesting way, much more engagement than it used to involve, um, I have uh, seen these again and again. So I thought I would draw attention to them. Okay, I hope this is a bit of interest and I will see you all soon. And goodbye! Hello, hello, hello! The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!